What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. And um, before I get into these videos, a couple things I want to say. Number one, I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers, LMLM, for his donation to the channel. Uh, thank you, LMLM, for your donation to the channel. I really appreciate it. And um, to anyone else who wants to donate to this channel, you can do so. The link's provided in the description box below via the PayPal or the Cash App. And also, uh, if you want to sign up to the Patreon, you can do so in the link provided in the description box below as well. I have nearly 30 videos up there now, uploaded yesterday. I'm going to try to upload something today on Patreon as well. I definitely will upload this weekend when I'm off, when I'm off from work. Uh, that's when I'm more active on YouTube because I'm not distracted with fucking work. Um, so, yeah, I have almost 30 videos up there. Um, and, uh, also I'm telling you guys, you're really going to want to sign up to the Patreon because that's where I'm probably going to do more of my ranting about the NBA because they're really cracking down on certain stuff, you know, especially us, man. You know what I mean by us? You know what I'm saying? I don't get the angry grandpa, you know, uh, break, <laughs> You know, that, that, you know, and I don't work for me. I'm, I'm looked at as an angry black man if I do that. So on the Patreon, you want to hear me do more ranting and shit, man, going in on people. I'll probably do it on the Patreon, man. All right. For only $2 per month. And also I want to say this too. All right. Before I get to the point, I don't mind. I had to box about yesterday. All right. Again. No, 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 no. No, not in here. Not the Kimpe. I had to block somebody, man, because I don't, I love debating, all right? I don't mind debating the point back and forth. But what you're not going to be is a condescending asshole to me or my subscribers and talk about how our point is wrong and how you're so right. And you write these long ass fucking summaries, all right? Anybody that knows this guy probably know what I'm talking about. You, you, you're writing about how I'm wrong, right? And you're so right. Okay, you want to mention how King dominated Jordan in the 90s. All right, you're making it one on one as if Jordan uh, played against a King one on one. That's when you want to make it one on one. See, when, when it suits your argument, it's a King versus Michael. But then when I say, well, when, what about the way the, the Seattle Super Suns dominated the Rockets back then? Then you say, oh, well, it must have been due to injuries, uh, you know, uh, games not played. Oh, now, now it's team. Now it's a team concept in these situations, right? Then I said, you know, the, the Sonics dominated the the Rockets. All Rock, uh, Rockets fans know that, right? Uh, but the Denver Nuggets dethroned the Sonics in the first round, and the Rockets went to win back-to-back championships. So that regular season shit matter then? No. The Cleveland Cavaliers swept the Chicago Bulls 6-0 in 1989. And we all saw what happened in the 89 playoffs in the first round, the shot. So the regular season shit don't matter. Utah Jazz swept the Chicago Bulls 2-0, okay, in the, in the 98 season. And we saw what happened in the finals. That regular season shit really doesn't matter sometimes. Sometimes it matters. Sometimes it doesn't, okay? The Miami Dolphins, for some inexplicable reason, have been about almost 500 against Tom Brady's Patriots the last 15 years. Does that mean that they're as good as the Patriots? No, it doesn't. So don't come with me that bullshit. This is too raw, the great one, nigga. Fuck that shit. I'm not going to be arguing people about this stupid shit, man. But let me get to the point of the video, right? I, this, this is about George Mikan, man. I don't mean to disrespect George Mikan, man. You know what I'm saying? Let me get to the point. George Mikan is a legend. Whether you guys want to accept it or not, He's an all-time legend. He was the most dominant player by far, by far, of his era. When you compare his overall dominance on his era, uh, to his era, the only player in comparison is Wilt. Not Shaq. That's why I get so fucking annoyed. I burn up inside when I hear people say Shaq is by far the most dominant player in the NBA. No, he's not, motherfucker. Not in comparison when you put it into his era. They don't change rules for Shaq. They change rules for Wilt. And they definitely change rules 
for George Mikan. Matter of fact, I think they changed rules more for Mikan than anybody. They widened the lanes. If memory serves me correctly, from what? Eight to, was it 12 feet? Got to brush up on some of my shit, a little fuzzy. And they instituted goaltending. Or was it 8 to 14 feet? One of you guys, I know Scorpio will, will correct me on that one. You'll fact check me on that one. But, but we all know that the lanes were widened because of George Mikan, considerably. And goaltending was implemented to try to curtail his overall dominance. And let's keep in mind that George Mikan had a season where he averaged 28 points per game in an era before shot clock, uh, before the shot clock was instituted in, what, 1955 or 54? Before that era, it was kind of place for teams to only score 40 or 50 points in a game. So you got a guy who was scoring at times half of your fucking points. Okay, so anyway, let's just give you a point of how dominant this guy was. All right, look up George Mikan right quick. 23 points, 13 rebounds, 3 assists for his career. Led the league in scoring, I think, uh, three times. 28 points, 27 points, 23 points. Uh, 28 points, excuse me. Uh, he didn't track rebounds his first couple of years with the Minneapolis Lakers. Uh, but like I said, was the most dominant player in the NBA. Uh, probably the first guy to really implement the hook shot and make it an effective weapon in the NBA. Um, just the cornerstone along with, uh, Vern, you know, the cornerstone to anchor the defense for the Mavericks Lakers, excuse me, along with Vern Mickelson and uh, Jim Pollard, Slater Martin, the Minneapolis Lakers, the first dynasty in the NBA. All right, one of just a handful of teams, along with the Bill Russell Celtics. Okay, Michael Jordan's Bulls and Kobe and Shaq's Lakers to three-peat. All right? The most dominant NBA player of the 1950s. And he has not had his jersey number retired by the Los Angeles Lakers. It's a disgrace. And just downright blasphemous, in my opinion. Absolutely just deplorable that they haven't retired his jersey number. And I don't want to hear that shit. Most people say, well, the, the main problem is, well, he played in Minneapolis and now they're in L.A. So what, what what difference does that make? Because if I'm not mistaken, the Atlanta Hawks retired Bob Pettis' number a long time ago. And he never played in Atlanta. He played in St. Louis. He played in St. Louis, didn't he? So how is it the Atlanta Hawks can get it right? And, and shout out to the Atlanta Hawks. I think they recently, maybe somebody showed them the video I made a couple years ago. They recently retired Pete Maravich's number in Atlanta. L.A., it's time for you to honor this great legend. It's bad enough that the NBA didn't help out this man toward the end of his life when he was dying of diabetes, having pieces of his body removed through diabetes to the point where Shaquille O'Neal had to pay for this damn man's funeral. It was bad enough that the NBA does a shitty job until recently, until many of the, the greats put this rule in that, look, these guys help to build our league. We got to help take care of these guys. So now these guys have free health care via the NBA. That's how Nate Tiny Archibald found out he had a potentially fatal heart condition. If it wasn't for that rule being implemented. So these guys had free health care via the NBA. Nate Tiny Archibald, we could have lost him a couple of years ago. This man needs to have his jersey number retired. Soon. Needs his jersey number retired. All right? I don't like how the, the Lakers are not really honoring some of those older legends. 
Okay? They're Lakers. Okay? Do it. And also, those who say, like, you know, he wouldn't be effective today and all that, that's all bullshit, okay? A great player will always be great, no matter what era they played in, all right? If, if George Mikan, you know, who was born in 1924, if he was born in 1994 or 84, or whatever the case may be, he would be great. He would have developed a three-point shot. He would still be a great player. He'd be a great rebounder, you know, and you can't question his size because Big George, George Mikan, was about 6'10", 6'11", really 6'11", because uh, they measured back then with uh, bare feet. So the, the fact that they measured in tennis shoes, that he'd be 6'11", about 270, all right? Maybe a little bigger today because of the way people eat and genetics and all that type of shit. Um, maybe 6'11", almost 300 pounds. He'd be a fucking monster if he was playing today's NBA. And you got to remember, he played in a... Well, then again, you got you to gotta say that maybe he'd be different because he played in a different era, you know, but back then, he played in a real physical era. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when guys still would be able to maul each other. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, it was a different brand of basketball back then. But he'd be great, man, in any era. But that's pretty much it, man. This man's jersey number.